business of catching cheaters in gambling, infidelity, and white-collar crime. These investigators are not just going after the rich and infamous. They could be hunting down your neighbor, a friend, even you. And first, we're headed to the casinos. We wanted to know, while you have an eye on your cards, who has an eye on you? There's a saying in Las Vegas, the house always wins. It's not that casinos don't like to lose. The very fact that they do keeps people coming back. But they don't like to lose to cheats. And they spend millions making sure you don't. Blackjack, the most popular and most profitable casino game in the world. And at a crowded table, a cheater's paradise. But not at Red Rock Resort. He's sure trying to distract our dealer. He's, he's going back and forth with his coat pocket. These guys are sure flaky the way they act. Bill Young is head of surveillance and former sheriff of Las Vegas. And he's betting the back of the house, if you are cheating, they will catch you. The security team leaves nothing to chance, even for our crew as we move through their casino. Realize that at this gaming table, every single move and activity that occurs here is permanently memorialized by a surveillance camera. What you do, whether it be simply pass posting a bet or capping a bet, is captured on video. Pass posting, adding chips when no more bets are accepted. Capping a bet, putting additional chips over your current bet. And what you're watching is not a misdemeanor, it's a felony. So this cheater won't be celebrating for long. With 2,000 cameras to choose from, Red Rock had him almost immediately. There's no small-time offense for cheating. Every act of cheating and gaming in Nevada is a felony crime and can land you in the state penitentiary. To think you are just going to be escorted to the door is a sucker bet. Most likely, you are going to meet this man. Gaming is the lifeblood of the economy in the state of Nevada. Jerry Marklin. He is the Chief of Enforcement of the Nevada Gaming Control Board. The Nevada State Gaming Control Board Enforcement Division works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we don't take holidays off. It's their job to review the evidence and make sure the punishment fits the crime. It's much easier at times to catch the novice uh, cheat because one, they generally don't know what they're doing. There's a nervousness about them. There's a sloppiness about them. This poker cheat plays an extra card from under her left arm. Another player calls out her lady luck. Some of these bumbling bad guys could be in prison until 2014. I've been in the, either the law enforcement or the security business for 30 years now, and I've seen every dumb thing that anybody can do, and nothing surprises me anymore. You make a better bet by staying home than coming out here and thinking that you're going to be able to beat us up. Anthony Curtis is a former professional blackjack player and director of LasVegasAdvisor.com. And Richard Marcus has made millions of dollars as a professional cheater and is the author of American Roulette. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Hello. Anthony, I want to start with you. Given how sophisticated these security systems have become in the casinos, why would anybody even attempt to cheat anymore? Well, I think a couple of reasons. I mean, like your video showed, the beginners, they just don't know what they're in for. And they hatch these ideas out by the pool and say, hey, let's go get some easy money. When you go up the level, you get into gambling and cheating teams, and they're very sophisticated, and they've got everything planned out, and they can, they can do it. And it's a little bit of cat and mouse between them and the folks that are watching them. It's huge cat and mouse. I mean, you know, the, there's a loophole in the system. The cheater will exploit it. The casinos close it up. The cheaters try to open it again, and it goes back and forth, and it becomes personal after a while. They're all trying to beat one another. Speaking of cheaters, Richard, you are a cheater, the uh, self-proclaimed. You made millions of dollars by doing it. Were you ever brought into the back room of a casino? Yes, I was. But never charged with anything? No, they never had enough evidence to charge me. Okay, so you're going to show us now a couple of the, the cheats that you performed on a regular basis that made you millions of dollars, beginning with the, at the blackjack this, table. This, this is called the 1005 This move? is called the 1005 blackjack pass post. Okay. I come to the table, I bet $15 like everybody else playing red chips on the table. In my hand, I have these black chips are going to be $1,000 chips. So I have $2,005. Back here, I have more $1,000 chips that are back up to give me credibility that I hide from the dealer. Now, when I win the hand, I get paid. I go and I switch the chips. I put this in my pocket and I say, hey, excuse me, you paid me wrong. I'm betting $1,000 chips here. What is this? And I give this a little nudge and the dealer picks those up and puts them in the rack. And now here I am with nothing but $1,000 chips and... 
But the trick there was touching him on the hand, right? Because that could be, you're not supposed to do that. That's a shock to the dealer. Nobody ever touches a dealer. So when I touch his hand, it's equivalent to me hitting him in the head with a bat. And he completely forgets what he saw. And the, the, the fact that I have these backup chips here, it's all psychological. The actual move itself is not magic. It's all psychology. psychological. Okay, let's go over the roulette table because you have another scam here that you call Savannah, is that right? Yes, this is the best casino cheating move ever concocted. Uh, you came up with it? Yes, I did. It's right. very simple. Here we have a roulette layout. We have chips on the inside. And all these are $10 bets, two or $15 bets, $5 chips. I come over to the table. And I have a cocktail glass in my hand, and I simply bet the $5,005. This is a $5,000 chip, and I bet it angled so the dealer cannot see the bottom chip underneath. Okay. The dealer spins the ball. If I lose, we're going to say that it comes out on a losing number, say number nine. Right. Okay. I lose, and I quickly grab this up, and I put it in my pocket. And I go, and if the dealer catches me, Put that, the dealer says, put that back down, put that down. Sir, what are you doing? And I go into a drunk routine, and I go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that the bet lost, I'm sorry, and I put it back down. But what I put down is $10, not $5,005. The, $5, the dealer never saw the $5,000 chip, so the dealer thinks it's only $10, and I'm a drunk, and I'm acting like this, and now there's no big deal because it's only about $10, and they don't call security. But if that bet had won, it's five thousand. You leave it, it as pays, is. It, I leave it as is. It pays ten thousand ten dollars or up to the maximum bet, and they call the eye in the sky because nobody called it out. They have to call out a big bet. All right, but but and, I go ahead. But finish up. I mean, they don't call. They, you know, nobody called it. Nobody saw it, so they verify it with the tape and they see that it actually was right. there. So the bottom line is, I win ten thousand dollars when when a bet wins, and I lose ten dollars when it loses. All right, but you'd have to be pretty stupid to do this, right, Richard? Very stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you don't do this anymore, right, Richard? Uh, it's so stupid. That's what. That's how it. Made me rich. But you no, don't, don't do this don't, anymore, no, do you, retired. Richard? Okay. I'm retired. All right. Very good. All right, Anthony, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Richard Marcus as well. Thanks. Tomorrow on Catch Me If You Can, the truth about getting caught when it comes to fooling around on your spouse. And still ahead, good gourd, the one-ton pumpkin that could smash the world record. But first, these messages.